education, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie, what a week. What? I, oh my God, lady, I am so sorry, but I'm so, I'm so, you know, glad you got to be with her at the end, right? Kinda. <laughs> I mean. Well, a day before the end. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, it was awful and shocking. Uh, but um, yeah, she got she got brought into the hospital on Thursday night, and uh, she died the following Thursday. And I, my sister and I, lobbied super hard. My mom had my mom was diagnosed. She got COVID at the yeah. fucking nursing home. And, um, right. which I, it's, it's like, oh, I thought that shit was happening in March. I didn't know it was still happening. Like I yeah. would have, had I known, I mean, I, you can't know, but I, had I known, I would have got a hotel and just had a nurse come, come to right. her and do her rehab there. She's just learning to fucking get out of her bed and push herself off the toilet. You know, yeah. she didn't have that strength. Yeah. So it was just ba- getting, it to was basic. just PT. It was just PT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, she was frail anyway, and I don't know that she would have, you know, she'd had some breathing problems in the last month anyway that weren't COVID related at all. So I don't know how much time she had. Like her, she obviously COVID killed her very quickly and she went into organ failure and stuff, but it, such an awful way to go. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) And you guys, 24 hours, 24 hours a day, right? Yeah, my sister came down on Saturday, so my mom went in the hospital Thursday night. Sister went down, came down on Saturday, and then we, basically, I guess starting on Sunday, we just no after uh, Monday when we got home from visiting her, we just left the iPad on for like yeah. almost seventy hours straight, and um, just carried her around the house and slept next to her and stuff like that, and uh, you know, it, it, and now you're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, and I've been getting a lot of emails because no one wants to bother you. And, <laughs> and I'm like, that's fine. Obviously, please do. Please mm-hmm. do. But it's, it's interesting because they're, you know, the live tweeting of the passing of your family <laughs> is, is intense. And Why the fuck is this my specialty? Jackie, uh, I, like I can't I, get married. I can't. I can't bring someone else into my life. <laughs> what I'm good oh, at oh, is oh. live tweeting your death. So, well, yeah, I'm never going to have a boyfriend now. <laughs> I did ask if you would live tweet mine. You're good at it. You're good at it. Let me just say. But I was trying to, you know, I was talking to people about it, and I was like, this is such an interesting way to process grief. Uh in the moment Uh you know i mean the thing is is you're not you i mean i don't know what kind of conversation the the kilmartin sisters had (laughs) uh during you know you know in the days after and in the the days during you know i mean some families cry you tragically hilariously tweet things i was crying too and i would be crying and then i would think of a joke and that would pull me out of it and i would tweet it and then i go back to crying it was almost like just pulling a plane out of a, a straight descent to the earth you know right right um and it still feels like that um, yeah 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 i mean it's i mean it's a, a clear case of or case. do you think <laughs> what case <laughs> it's a clear case of being a case it's a it's a clear case of i think stand-up comedy saving your life again mm-hmm. you know it's um yeah. the kind of thing where it's it's you process things through through writing and yeah i mean the other thing is since i did this with my dad like that was much more organic because i was like oh, what the fuck is happening? And this time I knew what was happening and I knew it was horrible. Yeah. And I, I mean, cause I've, I've heard about tons of COVID. I've been reading about COVID. I, I mean, I've been really interested in it. So you've been I, reading it. I felt like people, cause I didn't know it was this horrible 
and I've been reading about it. So people don't know what it's like to sit there and have your mother on an iPad. You can't touch her. You and we we got to have her on the iPad all the time. There, if we heard of other places, like in New York, when it was first coming down, they didn't have any of the technology, and people got like an hour on an iPad with their mother or father. Wow! And then you never saw them again. And you know, you can't hug the body. You can't, you know, like my oh, mother. Oh shit! Wait oh, a minute. My... So they had to use their iPad. They had to have an iPad too. Well, yeah, like past the hospital my mom went to was was a hot spot for a while. So they got really good at it. So every room had its own iPad when my oh. by the time my mom got there. But like in New York or maybe even Pasadena a couple of months right. ago in, in March, they had maybe one iPad that maybe a doctor or a nurse brought in and they did it with and they had fifty people that were dying right there. Like it right. it was worse for other people. Right. Worse. Like this is a good scenario, and at first we couldn't. They were like, "You can't come in. You can't visit her." And and my cousin, one of my cousins' his husband is a doctor, and he has a friend who's a doctor out here, and that doctor was working at hospitals where they were allowing visitation when they knew that COVID patient was going to die, and so that then I, my sister Eileen and I started hammering the hospital with it and i was tweeting about it and people were were pressuring that way and my sister's right. a doctor and she belongs to this facebook group of female physicians and they fucking rallied and yeah. they were it wasn't just people from twitter going fuck you it was like physicians going i work in a hospital they're allowed to you could this can be done safely and so the combination of it on monday morning the hospital said uh you know, we're revisiting our, our uh, policy and might even change it today. And my sister were, and I were like in the car. <laughs> right. And um, so we were the first ones that Huntington allowed. But I mean, it wasn't just us, it's everybody now. If they're brought to Huntington, you'll get an hour with right. your loved one if they're dying. Right, but I know that you are, is there, I'm hearing us on a feedback. Is, you, you hear? it isn't. Can Kyle, you hear are you? I'm, I'm not hearing it. I'm hearing everything pretty clear. I'm hearing, I think somebody's air conditioning. It's my air it's conditioning. My yeah, which is not, but I mean, that's pretty standard. Wait a sec. But. Oh, that's weird. Now it's much more silent. Because my white noise machine, which is just a swamp cooler. But here's what I liked about your Twitter thing. Wait, was I can't. That can we just pause for a yeah, second? No yeah, there's yeah, sure. something playing. In you recording. There we go. We're back. Okay. So should I, I, I stopped recording us on my audio. Because everything got haunted for a second? Yes. Right, right. Why don't you just go with the Zoom audio? Are you going to get the Zoom audio? Uh, yeah, that's what we'll work from. Okay. Do, do you have it set to go? I do. To, for three? Awesome. Yeah. So we're fine. Yeah. Okay. We're doing great. Uh, <laughs> okay, I don't know what just happened, and uh, but I mean, a set started playing. <laughs> what a, right. What a fuck. It's up. Uh, yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is, I liked what you tweeted, and you said, "Hey, politely email. Here's this guy's email address." Oh, and it, that was the wrong email, and he was the wrong guy. <laughs> oh, wrong guy, wrong email. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was it was. But hopefully, everyone was polite. Yes, I, I don't know, it, it, but it did change, and then we we got to see her, and um, you know she she responded to uh, we were rubbing her hands. You know, I was in, I had a face mask, a face shield on, and two uh, two masks. Uh, I I came in with a mask, and they they gave me one, and I put it over it. And the one, they, the mask started to separate. So yeah. one of them started going down in my neck and the other one was going up. And I was like, can I even touch? Like, I don't want to touch my face because I'm in, I'm in COVID. My yeah. mom is breathing in and out, in and out. So the room yeah, yeah. is full of droplets. Okay. Right. And um, so, it, but it, 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 the, it started going up so high. I was like looking at her from one eye and I'm like, fuck it. So I pulled it down. So I just made it no, please. <laughs> Did you have, you had gloves, right? I had gloves, but, but 
you know, you're Your not. Gloves were touching other things. Yeah, yeah. My gloves, my gloves were in COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't put your gloves near anything. So. Right. Wow. So that was on, and you got to see her Wednesday. Is that when you saw her? It was Monday, and then Monday. Like she, she tried to. She raised her head, which, and she was looking up, you know, and she couldn't. I, I don't know if she could even see anymore. Right. So she didn't, she didn't say anything or. No, no, she couldn't talk at all, but she was, she, she raised a hand and she raised her head and she opened her eyes and looked, was looking up. Yeah. So that was the most response we got. Yeah. And then after that, she wasn't responsive at all, but we just kept, you know, after that we had the iPad with us all the time and we would just, it was weird. We like go about our lives, you know, cooking and stuff. And then. I love you, mom. We're still here. Don't worry. We're, we're yeah. with you. We're hanging out with you. Right. Good night, mom. You're right on my bedside. I'm with yeah. you. I lean, I lean, I lean was camping on the floor. She's here. We're here with you. Yeah. So, um, I'm really glad Eileen came man. Oh yeah, totally. Um, <sighs> you know what? I, um, I was also psyched to be reminded of your mother's name. What she thought my name was Beth. What was it? What did she think my name was? <laughs> it was some um, something that wasn't my name. But uh... <laughs> so yeah, her name is Joanne, and my my Lady Gaga had had this album called Joanne, and the song on it is yeah. the song Joanne is about a woman named Joanne who's dying. I mean, Jesus. We, we heard it. We we're like, oh, like, and we just kept playing it over and over and over and over and over again. Wow. And the bird came. Oh yeah. The morning dove came a couple times. The, the, the most shocking time was, I mean, I was in the kitchen and my mom was on the iPad in, in my room and my sister was with her and I was like getting coffee and I look up and it, it's on a wire you know it's on like a power wire and and it's so stark it's so facing me like it's not in profile it's not looking down <laughs> it's looking at me yeah and kcrw was on and it was playing they're playing uh marvin gaze what's going on yeah <laughs> it was so strange surreal yeah yeah that... and it, um, yeah, the, the, the soundtrack, the soundtrack was fascinating to follow, of course. Yeah. And, uh, the music and the, all the, the pictures were heartbreaking. The, the jokes were so darkly, darkly funny. And, um, it's... Yeah, I, I just feel like, like, she just got gypped in every way, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, her, the, her the last you know fifteen years of her life were really painful. Like her, she had two hip replacements, two knee replacements. Her she lost about four inches in height from her spine, and her spine has like had like S curves in it. Not one, but like three. Oof, awful. She was on. Um, she was taking methadone, a lot of methadone. I I have the dosage because I have an old old wow. capsule or old bottle. But like every month getting her methadone was such a fucking pain in the ass. And there were times, like they wouldn't have it. There's, it's so tightly regulated. Yeah. And I, I'd be going to CVS and Costco and Walgreens and they all, it was all just this, no one could get it on time. So she would have days or up to a week without any painkiller at all, you know? And which is and just pain. Your pain. And I don't know what it, you know, what, what it does to your heart to be off methadone and then back on it and then off it back on it. It was so incredibly frustrating and it was so hard. I don't know. And then, and then her, she, you know, my dad gets this, gets this great death where everyone's visiting and you know, yeah. it's like a big party, you know, it was painful, but it was a party. And my mom just gets this, she gets taken to this shitty nursing home because they're all closed. They're all full or the ones that aren't full are closed down because they have COVID. 
right? So there's hardly any options. And I'm like, oh, this one's closer. It's either Highland Park or Panorama City, which is almost feels like in Nevada, you know? <laughs> That's right by well, my house. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and um, so, you know, I picked the wrong nursing home and it was a, she hated it. But it, here's there was the no right nursing yeah she but she always complained all the time so her complaining about a nursing home is like oh here we go again right <laughs> right so it's hard it was hard to, but now i'm like oh it was she spent the last conscious days of her life in a place she hated amongst strangers yeah and then was unconscious and or barely conscious in another place with strangers yeah so you know just awful awful and it, just, it felt like oh this this is always what it felt like this is what happens to the women <laughs> like the guys get it all the good stuff the women get freaking shitty death no one's around you no funeral no obituary the newspaper that all of her friends would read the contrast times where i i, I we paid two thousand dollars for my dad's obituary because it was gigantic right you know it's out of business like right so we're gonna have a zoom memorial in a couple weeks right like, it's a fucking caricature of the greater fuck. problems yeah 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 fuck it's weird too like so my sister was staying here and i was out in the living room after my after a couple days ago so after my mom died maybe that night or the night after i'm sitting with my son and my, my sister opens the door of the bedroom and it's, she opened it just the way my mom did. And I noticed my shoulders tensed and my back tensed. Because usually I'm used to that noise, that sound being followed by Laura, Laura, can you get? And, and then I'm like, oh, she's not here. So it's, it partially, it's a little bit of relief of, I don't have that tension in my back anymore, <laughs> but I do sure. have incredible guilt and, uh, massive uh grief sadness yes. yeah I yeah yeah that's um and and this is this is timed you could tie my mom's covid infection to memorial day weekend right you know somebody right. somebody came in contact with somebody who worked at the hospital at the nursing home i'm sorry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm sure the nursing home actual people were not out shirtless on venice beach in memorial day but no. all they had to do is come into contact with one person who was right right that's it and now and now 50 people have it from that nursing home yeah when i called yeah she said 50 she goes let me check the website oh, <laughs> like, what? oh my god i mean what a fucking is it, it's it, a, like hospitals don't have that kind of transmission rate amongst patients and stuff, but nursing homes do. It's just, they're so poorly run and they, they, they just do such a bad job. It, I, I, I'm shocked. I'm sh yeah. I shocked. I should be shocked because I knew what was happening, but honestly, I was like, I, I just thought California is doing a better job than it was. Right. And right. I, 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 they're, they were, you know, when it was first happening in the nursing home, there's no protocol. So now we have protocols that everyone's supposed to be following, but it doesn't seem to matter or they're not following them right. or some combination. Somehow right. COVID is sneaking through and everyone, you know, everyone in a nursing home is extremely vulnerable, of course. Yes. Here's the thing, like, yeah, my mom was going to die probably in the next year, but not like this. Not like this. Not like this. There is a nursing home that's, there's a, a house at the end of our block that has been, it changes hands relatively mm -hmm. regularly, and it is currently a nursing home. And, um, cause there's a lot of, um, whenever I, I do my exercise, hi, 2000 steps a day, hold your applause. Hey! Um, so, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> all right, I'll take it. Can I just, all, all you have to do is be strong enough to get yourself off a toilet and you'll never have to go to a nursing home, okay? Just right. do enough yoga or weights to get off of a fucking toilet. That's it. There you go. And so I, um, I, I go, I, when I, when I do my laps down toward that thing, there's always starting about like six months, like six months ago, it just, there's uh, a bunch of different old women who live there. 
and some of them are outside smoking and uh, they're sort of sitting in the driveway behind this gate. And then uh, the people who work there park in front of our house and they're in scrubs and they walk down and the shifts change every eight hours. And, you know, so I don't know. I don't know what the hell. All I know is that they have like a 50 pound bag of onions against the door. So I don't know what they're feeding these old women, but uh, it's got onions in it. Um, Because that's the bag that gets replaced. Okay. Do you know anything about Deal Hughley? Wow, that was crazy. I mean, I I, only what everyone knows what they saw on Twitter, but I mean, God. So I don't, was he, first of all, was he doing a full week? Was it a, when when was that last night saturday it was night? saturday night uh so no friday have... night friday, friday night, night i think it was okay so did he have a thursday show or was this the first show friday like what is there a previous audience i was exposed people were sitting in a regular front row in front of him and they weren't wearing masks because i saw the video so he's at zany's nashville right. this last weekend right and he collapses in the middle of his set and the MC helps him off, and then he tests positive for COVID, and now he's in a two-week quarantine at that hotel. The I MC. Guess. So your MC, the MC, who's making what a hundred bucks a week, that, uh, that person might have a, a disease that that possibly requires being hospitalized on a ventilator. Hmm, yeah. Great. Yeah, they, they they've got full insurance probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's, well, and I got, I got texts this week from, I mean, it, it's a litany of people, the people that have talked to me this week. This week uh, and bananas comedy wise. Yeah. I mean, literally. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold, uh, keep going. Oh yeah. Oh my, yeah, yeah. Wait, I, it's, okay. It's insane. It's uh, what, what I got was I got a, uh, but over the weekend I got texts from Tom Papa Mm-hmm. He's at Salt Lake, and this is his second week of a three-week run. Wow. And he was like, I think uh, there's trouble. I'm not going to go to Tempe next week. And I was like, go home. Tempe? You have hot... Yeah, Arizona. The phone is fucking blowing up right now. I wouldn't go to Arizona on a goddamn yeah. dare. Um, I wouldn't drive through it right now with closed <laughs> windows. Oh, right. Fair enough. It's and uh, he so he's not he's in Salt Lake and uh, he's like I gotta go I got another set, so he's got two two he was he texted me a picture of my uh, poster from the last time I got to headline Salt Lake hey 2021 uh, I would like to I would go back to I like wise guys sure. but um, how about in 2021 how about that yeah. and um, it was 2015 that's the last time I've headlined there oh my god. But here's the thing, like, if somebody, if someone, if anyone at his show gets COVID and that person or their loved one or somebody dies, do, do you want to be the comic that passed that along? Right. Right. I, I don't. I don't. No, I don't. Hey, um, I'm so sorry. Let us take a quick break. Okay. Uh, it's like we're at like 24 minutes, so. Yeah. Take a break, and we're back. Yeah, there's so many. Like, Deal Hughley has got it, but then every the people that are out working, right? Todd Berry was like, hey, are you going to um, work the road? And I said, not at this time. And then I saw that Todd Berry is having a virtual crowd work show that he's going to do. Did you see that? No, but that's great. I mean, that's perfect. It's we don't have anyone in control that's doing the right thing. And no. just was it this morning or last night in Tulsa, Trump was like admitted to not testing because he wants the numbers to stay low. We don't have anyone who knows what they're doing running shit. You know, nope. and even here in this great state of California with our great governor, we still had a fucking nursing home explode within 11 days, you know? Right. So, and you know, that, like and when my, I, the day my mother died, they said, Gavin Newsom said, now, from now on, you have to have mask on outside your house the yeah. day she died. But had he said that three weeks earlier, maybe she wouldn't have gotten COVID. 
if if he had done it before Memorial Day. Yes, and maybe she could have died being strangled by me like I had planned. <laughs> I was exactly. going to murder my mother. Not- <laughs> <laughs> now you're but never going to do the time. You stole uh, that from me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's brutal. It is um the the I, you know I, there's an LA coronavirus website that I was going to mm-hmm. in the last week every day I was going and the numbers you know just going up and down up and down up and down somewhere between 35 and 50 people dying a day and um and I was and, and if you scroll down you see where they're all dying and they're all dying in assisted livings they're all dying in nursing homes and and um rehab centers and you know just yeah don't try to get sober right now or try to get sober but alone alone (laughs) don't do it in a rehab what if you have like a what if you have a a hip or a knee problem you know what if like you have to be in a facility to get some sort yeah my well what you just said uh i told you that my my sister's mother-in-law uh has to get a knee replacement next week next month Mm -hmm. in july and um and darla was like she's not going i mean because of Lori, she's not going into a nursing home i am going to rent a and b and i'm going to take care of her for two weeks and i'm going to make sure she does her pt and then we're just going to do it like that that's what we're going to because you know D- darla's my sister's job is uh she's a financial advisor mm-hmm. and she can do it from anywhere right yeah. all she needs is a phone and the internet and downtown chicago We'll be fine. I'm glad. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's no, we, there's no leadership. There's no leadership. There's no word. I, I read an article, a European article that said some scientist in Europe said, it looks like the United States has given up. Yeah. they they feel sorry for us. And well, like- they, Thank God. Thank you. Thank you for feeling sorry for us. all gone underground in at the end of February. This could be done by now. We could mm-hmm. all be back in our normal lives and have the little pockets they manage with contact tracing. Fossey said this is still the first wave. So. So let's just get good at Zoom comedy and let's get good at digital shit. Let's get good at outdoor shows. I thought the, did you watch the Chappelle show? The Chappelle? I, I, I watched most of it. I, uh, the, 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 my thing about watching stand up on television, I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Um, ah, nothing moves you. I love it. You- <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, you know, I watched your set today. It was a delight. It was, uh, that was 15 minutes I wanted to watch. And it's not that you- I watched yours. I was in and out. I was watching pieces of it. And then- <laughs> well, I can't oh, watch for Are you hour. kidding? Yes. No, no. And it was okay. 50 minutes. And that's what I've decided to do, by the way, is just do... Um, I've actually made a new decision about my album. Is yeah. I'm going to do two, uh, two albums. Oh, one's going to cool. be clean. One's going to be dirty. Or one's going to be dark and one's going to be hopefully playable on laugh usa uh, <laughs> to put it uh, uh financially and uh well because the poor bastards who came last week sat through literally an hour 40 minutes of me doing all of it wow. and in the last week i've written two new i've written one new bit and a chunk God i got damn. the murder hornet bit i and, loved that that was great i loved it thank you i loved it it's um i'm waiting uh to be <laughs> but it's a bit about something else it's not actually about murder hornets you know or is it only about murder hornets and people are going <laughs> to think it's about something else who knows it's always it's up to interpretation like all the best jokes <laughs> thank you your, <laughs> yeah, your stuff i mean the thing is is i remember just like i i couldn't i had to st- you know like when you watch comedy and um, you got to pace the back of the room mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you turn and face the stage and go, yes, that's how I watched your set today. 
So um, it's weird. I had another set tonight on Sophia. Ale Sophia Alexander has an album that came out today on oh, nice. Father's Day. Awesome. She's a former comic of the week, and it was all people whose parents had heard her, her, whose dads were dead because her dad is dead. Uh, and uh, so for some reason, I felt better on your show, and then on her show, I felt immeasurably sad, and oof. I was sort of talking through it. It was weird. <laughs> But, um, right. Well, that's, that's the nature 10,000, 10,000 hours or whatever. I don't want 10,000 hours of grief, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> I meant stand up, but, uh, I don't, I, I don't blame you for thinking that I meant that. Uh, I will say this, let us do the comic of the week. That's an excellent lead in. Oh yeah. So our comic of the week is Taylor Garen. She, um, very, very funny. Did you watch her, her YouTube? Video? I did. What was the, uh, she, what was the thing that cracked me up? It was, I, I sent you the YouTube clip. Yes. And, um. Oh, you sent it to me. That's right. Yeah. Cause you sent me her, you sent me she, sort of her writing and stuff. Right. She writes for Reductress, which is, yeah. is such a brutally savage, uh, website. <laughs> and, uh, so, she, so right off the bat, you're like, okay, this girl, this girl is vicious. And, uh, her comedy is really, really funny. So it's super smart. Yeah, Taylor Garen. And it's Taylor Garen, right? Yes. Yeah. How does it go, Kyle? Uh, it, uh, which part? The yeah. last well, name is G-A-R-R-O-N, and her Twitter handle is Casual Afro, which is yes. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's really uh, everyone's a casual Afro right now, Ex uh, <laughs> but only if you had a, a, a more uh, formal Afro previously. <laughs> uh, currently. Uh, My son's hair is like growing up. It's pretty amazing. Um, I will say that uh, my hair I, we did another, uh, quarantine hunker down haircut. The hunker down haircuts keep coming. Looks good. Um, it did, it does all right. He just essentially, I, it was wet. He mm -hmm. took a paper scissors and he cut straight across the back of my hair. Oh my God. That's right. And, uh, he was like, do you want me to try layers? And I said, stop talking. Uh, my, <laughs> my, my hairdresser, she's, uh, She's doing, she's, she's doing very limited, right? And I think I might hire her to just come to my backyard and do it out in the open. She's actually thinking of leaving hairdressing and moving to Costa Rica. <laughs> Which yeah, I'm I, like, think... I get it. You know, why is, get... this country oh. is, I, is biting and get all this back on track. It's a fucking mess. I don't know how we're going to get back on track with, with Corona at this point, you know, it's, oh. It'll, it'll take a decade. It'll take a decade for sure. If we don't, uh, dissolve into, uh, full on door to door, uh, civil war. Here's what, here's a weird thing. Um, just, I'm just going to put that out there and then keep talking. Sure. Uh, so the, uh, <laughs> Andy is watching the Watchmen on yeah. HBO cause it's free right this weekend. Yeah. And, um, not a chance in hell. Am I watching the Watchmen? Uh, I, I here's how I want to watch the Watchmen. While I'm in the kitchen, he's watching The Watchmen. I'm in the bedroom reading a book. He's watching The Watchmen. And then I can come in occasionally and go, how's it hold up? How's it, is it, uh, are we in the comic book yet? Or are we still in horrible Tulsa? And, uh, and he's like, uh, the, he's on the third episode. He could only do one episode a day. But there, it's like, it, it's like I, people. I didn't finish it. It was, but I mean, I will finish it. It supposedly it finishes. It's a masterpiece. Like it's yes. very good. Yes, I understand. It is a masterpiece. Oh, I yeah, don't. You definitely don't watch it. Absolutely. Oh, it's There's nothing not there for, for you. It's yeah, it's <laughs> not for me at all. It's it's like it reminds me of my uh, this woman I worked with in the '90s, who I might have mentioned before. Had it's a line that has followed me and haunted me. She's a Lakota woman that I worked with at Northern Sun Merchandising named Cynthia, I believe. And I was listening to hip hop and she said, I can't believe you like this music. And I said, yes, I don't know. Sometimes I like to listen to, you know, really political hip hop to get mad. And there was this pause and she goes, you need music to get mad. And then she turned around and walked away. She was literally the funniest, oh like coldest. She was beautiful, right? Wow. But she had the coldest, like, look sometimes on her face. And it was just rage. Amazing. And Native American rage, my friends. There's no, sure. there's nothing like it. Sure. Uh, but I don't need to watch The Watchmen to know how bad it can get. Uh, the first episode, w w which is, has the Tulsa massacre in it, is 
I mean, it's incredible to watch and, and incredible to know that I had maybe heard about it, but didn't really know. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to, f I, I can't remember if I, if when I uh, skimmed Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States. In the <laughs> I think his, his, his name is Howard Skin. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's where I, I might have, or I just might have, just sort of when I was, and we went to a, a Black Lives Matter protest on Juneteenth, and um, oh, cool. Yeah, here's my thing about protesting. It remains the same with me from I, because I haven't pr before. Captain Knobjob, before Trump came into power, I hadn't really, I had protested maybe a handful of times over the last 15 years. Right. And then, but from, you know, from when I was in high school through college to after that, I would protest um, more often, shall we say. I wasn't a, a huge protester, but I would go to, you know, at least you know, three or four a year, maybe more. And I went to dc once for abortion rights and stuff but um went to dc to protest yes but i also had a job i was selling okay. t-shirts okay so don't get me wrong there's always some weird sales uh hookup sure. or a comedy hookup i'm so sorry uh but the i will give it that um that I can last about 45 minutes. It's, it's a 45 minutes to an hour and a half at a protest. I'm, it's like going to a museum for me. Yeah, right. I'm like, all right. Now, now I will, have we all voted? And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> so, wow. Can you guys hear music behind me? No. Why is this, why is our podcast haunted today? <laughs> I can't imagine why. I can't imagine. I can't There's no reason in the last <laughs> seven days. My mom wants to interrupt this podcast so badly. She has before. And this is all she knows how to do. Like, typically, she's hitting the wrong buttons and the wrong things are playing. The there is uh, essentially a mariachi band uh, in my in my uh, alley behind me, and it is a place where people like uh, to jam. Uh, yeah. And when I say jam, I mean have sex in a Versa. Anyway, <laughs> so is that a car? That is a car. Okay, it's a Nissan Versa, maybe. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, um, uh, whatever it is, why don't we take another break? Have another yeah. Max Fun break. All right, so, and then so then the comedy drop. First of all, so my mom is dying, right? And I, but I but my brain, I have like it's it's split up into eight different pieces at least, right? Right. So part of me's like the Dalia stuff comes down, and I'm like, ah, uh, Dalia jokes. Like I can't like I can't even turn off that part of my head. <laughs> and and I was like, is when this is this me getting too excited about? Like when I got really excited about Shane Gillis and I started tweeting a lot of jokes that I felt guilty about <laughs> later. Um, and then I was, that, but then there was more proof and I'm like, nah, let's go in. <laughs> shit. The water's great. Come on in. <laughs> and it was a, just a welcome diversion from uh, the, the death in front of me. Yes. Uh, yeah. You thanked, I, you thanked him. If I remember correctly, though, I don't think you tagged him. <laughs> and, <laughs> He doesn't want to be tagged by an older woman, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Augie Smith, and he said, weirdly enough, he's been texting with my daughter. She's four. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so Crystalia turns out, uh, and granted, here's the thing. I, I think I've been on shows with him, or I've seen him in the distance, him and his yeah, weird right. haircut. Yeah. He's a, the dude's a haircut from from the dawn of man you know i mean he's not he's not the wavy frat boy haircut he's the awesome the awful the david like, Lee roth impersonator haircut i don't know what that what that is but it's grim and he's uh i guess he's you know he would his snapchat was full of 14 year olds who he was like here's my phone number if you want to just you know get right. to know your favorite famous comedian and they're 14 and dumb yeah. and it's so like it's so gross on so many levels but what just one level of you me so many comics i know we're all working on our jokes and we're trying what we're trying to do is is 
is pare down a joke, right? And just make it perfect. And that's all we're obsessed with. And, and to find out there's other comics that all they want to do is fucking get 14 year old pussy or something. It's like, what? You and I do the same thing for a living. Are you fucking kidding me? And why, why do all, all these, all these uh, streaming, all these platforms, all these people that have hours to give out, why are they always attracted to these comics? They always give them second, third, fourth specials. And we're just sitting here writing jokes like fucking idiots. <laughs> right. You know? We are monkeys in front of typewriters and they are just like, you know, you could fuck that monkey. And you're just like, it doesn't make it. Any- yeah, you're, Here's you're dead. Thing. You give somebody a special and it does well, they're going to have a fan base, right? They're going to probably continue to do well on stage if they're competent. He was a competent, right? His audience yeah. responded, whatever, right? It's, he, was, he, did, he, did the, he did the job, but at the, at the minimum kind of situation right. where, yeah, where yeah. he was up there. We he know was on stage. Of comics like this who technically kill, but we know all their little dumb tricks or whatever, right? Right, right. They're they're but, working. But you could give you could give that same platform to you, to me, to a million other people. They would also become semi-famous, semi like, oh, I know that person. Let you could make them. money off of them as well. Yeah. So fucking pick other people, <laughs> please. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Are you tired of deleting a catalog of sex predator stand-up specials? Are you fucking tired of it? Can you just pick people that don't do that shit? Watch their acts. See what they talk about. Because the act is reflective of who they are. And I, I would even say like, you, oh, Jezelnik. Jezelnik's act is great jokes designed to provoke. That's who he is. He's not a sex predator. He's no. a great writer and he's trying to needle you. So yeah, he is a button a pushing shit. jackass sometimes. But you know what he is? He's an amazing joke writer. Yeah. But he is not hiding that he is a button pushing jackass. That's what he's at doing. All. That's fine. Like he's not. So because somebody had said something like, oh, what about Jezelnik if their act is reflecting? No, no, no. You no. don't need to do that. There's not a single Chris D'Elia joke I've ever heard anyone quote. And you know comics that all they can do is Jezelnik jokes and try to do knockoffs of them, you know? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, <sighs> there are so many. Gr- I mean, if you are desperado to book some, some straight white guy. There's a thousand. Kyle's sitting right there. He's right there. Uh-huh. You guys. <laughs> there's like there's wor- there's there's people that are not fucking children. So you know, many of them. so many good comics. Why do the why do the same assholes keep getting a second, a third, a fourth special? You aren't saying anything new. Is anyone right. at these networks going, hey, the special isn't very good? No, it's like <laughs> no, we. We, we told them we want an hour by November. We'll take whatever they give us. You know, does anyone fucking care that it's just more re, repackaged premises that have been done to death already? Right. Now, does anyone give a shit? Why, why are comics the only ones? We're, we're the only ones going, oh, our special isn't ready. I mean, I'm, I'm on a podcast with Eliza Skinner. She hasn't released hers in two years because she's like, it's not ready. It's probably genius. And then these assholes who work on a chunk for five minutes and they're like, well, that's my closer. Could you get someone who puts a little fucking effort into writing and being a person and giving that person a fucking special for once? Just once. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I know. I'm with you. I was wild up because of other things happening in my life. <laughs> No, this is the same level as before. <laughs> that is awesome. I have to say that, um, yeah, there's, I mean, literally, I would I would watch a special from any of the people that yeah, called me. Of course, mm-hmm. yes. How about that? Like the, the <laughs> Wait, who am I lying to? I'm not watching anyone special. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can I please have a special? You could watch that. The, the Joey Diaz Rogan clip, like that was a separate issue that, yep. um, see, and there were, I, 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 I thought he was just bullshitting. I, so think, there, I, I thought it was like that scene of dudes bullshitting each other about sex conquests because they like to do that because they're insecure fucking pieces of shit. Right. And I've heard 600, 600 times I've been party to that conversation. It's it's white noise to my comedy career. (laughs) It's guys at the bar talking about who they fucked and how many times they fucked them and who they 
if, and you're like, no, 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 absolutely right. not. I see you. I see what you look like. You are not getting blowjobs. Okay. I honestly, we're all looking at you. Right. Like, Nobody so has that like, kind of weightlifting situation. I mean, yeah. wow, that was really mean. I'll be over here uh, being <laughs> overweight. But I so mean, that, that to me is like normal dude comedy bullshit there's a, there's a <laughs> that, there's is a that. that is sadly normal dude comedy bullshit yeah, it's it's and it's and and there's an audience for it obviously yeah there Joey is. has a huge podcast following obviously rogan does i mean people so people enjoy that that's fine if you if you like your 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 entertainers lying to you about the blowjobs they're getting and that helps you get through your day okay that's good <laughs> everyone makes money and everyone has a nice podcast time okay yeah so but but again to the to tie it to more to Dalia the whole frustration of those kind of voices get more uh, industry attention and this is going back since we started in stand up it's just so and before. frustrating you know. Yeah. And then there's the, the, the Jeffrey Ross, you know, uh, that, that, that's, body. that's a girl oh. sell her dad oh. selling Jeffrey Ross. Cause she, cause he wants to hang out with Jeff Ross. He says, yeah, you could fuck my 15 year old. I was like, hi, hey, are we in the middle ages? Cause you it's just, so it's like, you also can have this goat, which one you could fuck either one of them. I don't care. And, uh, that's that girl. That was that woman's dad. Yes. I yeah. Because it was Florida, and in Florida, if your if your dad says, if your it's parents Florida? say, yeah, that's where it happened supposedly in Florida. Oh, okay. And uh, the law in Florida is that if your parents consent for a 15 year old to go out with a 33 year old, it's okay. And so her dad, so her it's pictures of her and her dad hanging out with Jeff Ross. He's 33, she's 15, and um, and she I was like, it was happening more in New York. No, you said specifically it's florida so they checked to make sure that's what i that was that was the story i heard and feel free to get a second uh no, second i uh, haven't been i've been dipping in and out because i can't it's it's a lot and I it's have a lot, lot happening so here's I, I mean the thing is is i spend you know i mean we've been we've been hanging out with these guys the very the the spectrum right the crystal to yeah. the to the you know guys just talking shit the joey diaz's right, right, right. and you know, guys just cheating on their wives with age appropriate women. Exactly. Yeah. Just, I just, you know, I'm three years on the road before I met a comic who didn't cheat on his wife. You know yeah. what? The first headliner, I literally called people. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, I also think like that scene in Boston, like it, like when you were starting in, you were starting in Minneapolis or Madison. Right? Okay. Well, it was, Ma started, it was Midwest. Okay. So during late eighties, early nineties, right? I'm in San Francisco. San Francisco had a few guys like that, but it was, it also had so many weirdos and cool people that it was really an, an amazing place to start. But the scene of Boston, like if you, if you, if you hear about the guys who didn't get famous, yeah. like those Boston headliners, they sound like, horrible men okay maybe great comics maybe funny to hear a story about them <laughs> and all the fucking coke they snorted at the end like oh that's a funny story but i wouldn't want to work with you for a week i wouldn't want to live with you for a week and i wouldn't want to hang out with you for a beer <laughs> that's i mean and there were guys like that i mean in minneapolis when i moved to minneapolis it was owned that whole town was owned by scott hansen he had five right. clubs Jeez. five clubs that he literally threw out the window and like there is a there's a cut on my finger because he would pit comics against each other and he would drive us all nuts and he would right. throw us little pieces of meat and i remember he would do this this thing there were two guys and kp anderson's uh he's a producer now right an executive producer of a lot yeah. of stuff and um and john bush were these two guys who were sort of the darlings of the of the community for a little while and scott hansen would bait them against each other to see who would get who would get work and and so he ruined any chance of those two guys ever being friends oh yeah right because right, those right. two guys and they're both decent guys by the way yeah, they're both that. good he, he was in new york when i moved to new york he had just moved there before, yeah, yeah yeah i think he lives in dubuque or something like that or des moines Did and kp lives in all together i believe so i believe he got um but um 
But Hanson, he would light everybody up, and he would just play one thing against each other, and he was a big one for gross talk, right? There was a lot of gross, like, who he's fucked, and he was a big, big guy. He laid, like, 550. He was the guy that Seinfeld famously said he he went uh, – Scott went and saw him at the, the Warner, the Walker, and he was trying to get uh, Seinfeld to come and do a set at one of the five clubs after his show. Mm-hmm. And Seinfeld was supposedly sewing a button on his shirt. Yeah. And, uh, and he was like, I'm not, I just did a set. I'm done. I don't want to do another set. <laughs> and, uh, and Scott was like, well, do you want to go out to eat? And without looking up, Seinfeld said, Scott, you've eaten. Anyway, so, <laughs> which is super rude. Uh, but, Scott Hansen was genuinely, he did some good things for comics, but on the whole, he, he just, he literally, he liked to play that power. It was, that's what he, he had power and he abused it. What, what, it, it yes. And I, and I think like the guys that started in Boston, but I think the con like Rogan started there it, it, like we had san francisco we had people coming from boston right Marin came out uh, paula poundstone bobcat like dana gould dana gould the smart people that weren't gross like that were like i gotta get the fuck out of here right and yep. there was there's a sub like boston bred some really gross people and they're still in the business <laughs> you know uh, well, so, um, and that came from late 80s early 90s shit you know when it was it was just it, 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 comedy came out of i don't know fucking it, everyone was doing coke it was it was just i mean a lot of people were right I it was a it. it was a boom the headliners were a lot of the headliners were it was a boom that was that was heavily laden by all dudes and all yes. of those dudes got so much power so quickly and it went to their to to the wrong kind of person to the wrong kind of man like it, like it still is to the wrong like kind of man yep it's still going to the wrong kind of man right but it's also but it is bleeding off to like some of the i mean so there are good people yes yes there are good people who have who have who have done it but if it goes to the wrong kind of man he will be a predator and take advantage and be worse than just shit talking and the white noise of the of the green room yeah and the white noise of the green room is horrible and you never know what's real or what isn't real and i always assume it isn't real I, I I assume that you're an who incel. Talks about it? Who, if it's real, who talks? Why why, why would you? It, it's all it's all bullshit when guys are talking like that, you know. It's to so me, gross. I think, you know. But I mean, here's the thing. There, there's another thing where, like, so there's one kind of comic, male comic, that'll talk about all the sex they're having, and then they're not having that sex, right? It's clear <laughs> as soon as you meet them off stage, it's like, all right, those are great jokes. <laughs> yeah, you're not. <laughs> the joke writer and then there's other guys that talk about whatever they're doing and they actually do it right so yeah. so you, you, you're Dalia, you're louis ck and stuff and it's hard to tell the difference between the two that's what i'm saying it's that's Louis what i'm saying the guy that's doing the crimes right right because what you have to do is you have to just keep sort of you know i'm i'm just going forward going are they kidding or are they or are they gross and kidding or are they gross and yeah. horrible and evil. And I, you know, I have spent 35 years being around these guys going, I got to assume you're gross and kidding. And because I don't know how to fix it or, or I'm scared to pipe up, you know, for 20 years, I was scared to say anything. And that's, that, but that's on me, but I mean, it's terrifying. Aside from them being like, I mean, how many times have you had to follow somebody who like, killed but the way they did it like it's lowest common denominator it's just and they get the men all riled up and they get everyone riled up and you got to spend like 10 minutes just going all right we're redirecting right and it looks like you're bombing but it's like no i have to you fucking spread you threw shit all over this room and i've got to spend the first five minutes of my set cleaning up your right. fucking mess of lazy, gross jokes so yeah. I can tell some smart shit, okay? Congrats yeah, on your Netflix exactly. special. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, and I do, I like, you know, uh, there's been, there's been, you know, good guys are talking about it online and, and some good guys aren't talking about it online. And, you know, there's, 
it's it's that whole white silence is violence that rhymes hey that's a great <laughs> sign saw it at the saw it at the the protest gonna put it on the back of mine uh so but the it's just that that sort of silence because we're all scared we all don't know that if there's going to be another fucking week in our lives we all don't know how, you know if we're going to get yeah. more i want to work at the comedy store i want to work i want to work the comedy store I so, want to work helium. I want to work Tacoma. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back and work all the improvs if they'll ever, you know. But, know. you know, they're busy booking circle jerks, and it's it's annoying. It's tiresome. It's, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow the, the, the biggest understatements of the, of the world. It's annoying and tiresome, you guys. We find it annoying and tiresome. But also, I, I also don't feel like it's, stand-up comics jobs it's not our job to tell someone to not behave a certain like we're all sort of independent contractors right we're just trying to get our spots trying to get our weeks and to and to all to all of a sudden the burden of monitoring a sex predator is to comics that just want to get spots that's it's also not right and we're we're not aside from you know maybe tweeting some disapproval we we don't have any power to change it you know right Um, there is a human responsibility to those children yes true but but shouldn't the police be called like like why why is it on female comics to comment on jeff ross's uh relationship with a 15 year old when you could, so a detective should be involved at this point, right? Like I, I, I kind of don't understand why, why, why it's left up to standups who are right. who are uh, um, the most vulnerable financially, most of us, and damaged in well, ways. The I mean, thing, I think what I think you're, conf- in my opinion, and tell me if I'm, you will, uh, I, you might be conflating the idea that that it's not. It's not women's jobs to stop sexism. It's men's job to st- to to um, uh, to to do uh, to stop sexism, and it's also. Um, but I get why you think that it. You know, you know, in a workplace, everybody has to pipe up and say this is horrible. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because I'm scared of uh, for my income. Right. I'm scared of of how I'll be perceived by other people, you know, I've got all of the basic caveman days, things that I'm scared of. I want you to like me. I want you uh, to have sex with me, even though you've never want, you know, whoever you are, I have never wanted to have sex with me. And I want you to, uh, to want to give me, you know, prizes. So, and all of those are affected when I have to do what I'm supposed to do, which is the right thing. And so sometimes I'm going to fail. Sometimes I'm going to choose to fail because I'm scared. Mm-hmm. And I'm not proud of that statement. And and I think what you're saying is that it's not necessarily my responsibility. But I, it's it just like sometimes it's it's hard. You wake up on Twitter and it's like, oh, now I, I got to I gotta investigate a rape. <laughs> and, and then call it out like... I was just Hello, Agatha so, Christie. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's 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 so much nicer when Ronan Farrow does the whole thing for you. You know what I mean? Right. Why? Why, why do? Why do comics? He's a journalist. Have... He's an investor. I know. Do you want to have a? Do you want us to do a, a, a sort of a, a, a broken wood Miss Fisher's mysteries, where we go to different comedy clubs and solve the the murders? I'd watch That's that. It. I I would totally watch that. Why don't we just solve their calendars? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish we could end on that. Can we? How much? Pretty close. Have? We got two minutes. Long. Yeah, two minutes. What are you working this week? <laughs> um, I uh, I have spots. Uh, I'll I'll tweet them. Uh, I I'm really. I'm doing the tweet. Maria show this week. Oh, cool! Right on. Yeah. Where it's uh, essentially it's just going to be us in Zoom, yeah. and then they're going to rush. It's a rush ticket, and they're pushing it to some place that doesn't have laughs, some horrible cave somewhere where I don't get okay. to hear your laughter. Okay. Um, I don't approve, but uh, but it pays. So I'm, I'll I'm be doing, doing it. an NPR show tomorrow with Aaron Jackson. Um, what? Yeah. That's 
That's amazing. Yeah. I love Aaron Jackson. Uh, ask me another. You're, oh, you're doing the Aaron Jackson? You're doing Ophira's show. Yes, Ophira's show with uh, Aaron Jackson tomorrow. I'm taping it. I don't, I, I don't know if it's live. I, I don't think no, it's no, live. it's not live. I've done okay. it. I've, I've, I've done it. Uh, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, it's super fun and super easy. Cool. It's, it's, it's Ophira and Jonathan um, uh, Colton. Yeah, sounds like it'll be fun. It, and it's, then, and, and then they'll play the hell yeah, out of it and you'll nerd. get a bunch of new nerds who love you. Yay. Yay. That's what we're looking for. Nerds who love us. But I think my Maria show is on Saturday and then I don't, okay. I'll probably do another, um, another weekend show. And you don't know, I might put some of these people on it. All of them are willing to do a set. Yeah. So, um, that's plenty, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm so sorry, Laurie. I'm happy that you're talking again. Thank you. Yeah.